A good amount of people expected the Baltimore Orioles to take another step forward after their surprisingly good 2022 season, but with a 101-61 record, the Orioles exceeded almost everyone's expectations and finished the 2023 season as the best team in the American League. With a high-powered offense and a shutdown bullpen, if there's been one place that the Orioles have looked to improve this year, it's the starting rotation, which is why they went and made that trade with St. Louis at the deadline to get Jack Flaherty. Now overall, the rotation hasn't been bad. 11th in ERA, 13th in FIP and Sierra, and 17th in F4, so around average. But what most people thought was missing most of this year has been that true number one ace kind of pitcher at the top of this rotation. And the Orioles had hoped that they had finally had this guy, when they brought up one of their top prospects, Grayson Rodriguez on April 5th. Baltimore had drafted Rodriguez 11th overall in 2018 out of high school, and through five seasons in the minors, he put up a 2-4-0 ERA over 333 and a thirds innings, finishing 2022 as MLB's number six prospect in all of baseball. But Rodriguez would get off to a rough start to begin his major league career. In 10 starts, going 45 and a thirds innings with a 7-3-5 ERA, 590 FIP and 415 Sierra, eventually getting sent back down to AAA on May 27th. But after some time in the minors working on his game, he was brought back up to the big league club on July 7th. And since then, he's put up numbers alongside some of the best pitchers in baseball, making 13 starts going 76 and two thirds innings with a 258 ERA, 276 FIP and 388 Sierra. So seeing this kind of a drastic change makes you start to question what did Rodriguez fix to start seeing so much success and what does this turnaround mean for the Orioles rotation so let's take a look and answer these questions and as we do if you enjoy the video please hit that like button subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos like this one so how has Grayson Rodriguez turned his season around so drastically well the first thing that we can point to is simply just throwing more strikes. It's no secret that the more that you can put a hitter on the defensive, the more that you can get him behind in the count, the better off you're gonna be as a pitcher. And Rodriguez really struggled early with throwing strikes. And this hurt him in a couple different ways here. During his first stint in the majors, Rodriguez was missing his spots a bit more than the average starting pitcher, with a 98 location plus versus the 101 average. And he was missing out of the zone more often than not which led to a lot of walks, a 10% walk rate for him versus the 7.9 league average for a starting pitcher this year. And it's great as a pitcher if you can be just out of the strike zone and get hitters to chase and help you out, try to hit tough pitches, but if you're missing your spots and hitters aren't going after it, then you're not only putting yourself behind in counts where hitters can look to do more damage, but you're also putting on free base runners and forcing yourself to pitch out of the stretch with traffic on the base paths. And it's pretty clear that this was something that Rodriguez cleaned up during his time in the minors. In this second half, we've seen him hitting his spots more with a 104 location plus, which has him in the zone way more often, now above average, and most importantly, getting the walks down below average too, down to 6.9% of the time. And you know what, close enough, I'll take it. Nice. He's getting to pitch with less traffic on the base paths and more importantly, putting hitters behind in the count, making it even tougher for them to hit his already nasty stuff. And the most important part of this starts with that first pitch of the at-bat. Because this year, if the hitter goes up 1-0 to start an at-bat, they have an 828 OPS and a 129 WRC+. But if the count starts 0-1, that drops down to a 623 OPS and a 68 WRC+. We're talking about roughly the difference here between Julio Rodriguez and Ji Juan Bay, who, sorry for that stray shot there. When Grayson Rodriguez first came up, he was really struggling to throw that first pitch strike, only 54.5% of the time, well below the league average this year. But since coming back up, he's jumped that up to 66.8%, now well above average. So he's starting so many more of these at-bats in a way better spot for himself, 
and getting ahead of hitters as early as you can is so important for a pitcher. And for Rodriguez in particular, it's helped him to avoid barrels, drop his average allowed, and give up way less home runs. Because as a hitter has to defend the strike zone more to avoid striking out, they can't look to jump on something and be as aggressive and try to do damage. And Rodriguez has been able to get more of these first pitch strikes by trusting his, on average, 97 mile per hour fastball to get him ahead of hitters more. Only throwing a first pitch fastball about 50% of the time when he first debuted, but in the second half here, that number has kept climbing and now has been over 63% of the time in September. And this brings us to the second big change that he's made to his game so far. And that's been some changes to his pitch mix. Mostly, trusting and using that fastball way more often. We already talked about how he's using it more just to start at bats, but since coming back up, he's let that fastball play way more overall throwing it only about 45% of the time during his first time in the majors, but that number's continued to climb up to almost 57% here during September. And Rodriguez has a really good fastball, it's just when he first came up, he wasn't really getting the best results when he used it. But now that he's trusting it more and really relying on that fastball and challenging guys with it more, it's been a way more productive pitch for him. But this hasn't just made his four-seamer more effective. By throwing more fastballs and forcing hitters to be ready for this high 90s heater, he's made it so much more devastating when he does change speeds. His main secondary pitch has been his changeup, which has been a really good pitch for him all year. But as he's thrown more fastballs and hitters are getting more locked in on that pitch, now when he throws that changeup, it's been way tougher for hitters to time it up. So he's been able to use that changeup more effectively to get hitters off of that fastball, but it's not just the changeup. His breaking balls, which had a 15.4% strikeout rate in May before he was sent down, went up to about 37% in July and August, and 43% in September. So now that he has hitters timed up more for that fastball, he can turn to his slider and his curve with two strikes for that put away pitch. When he first came up, he was trying to change speeds way more often and use a full five pitch arsenal to try to keep hitters guessing, but now he's basically ditched his cutter and stuck with those other four pitches, letting his fastball do the heavy lifting and help him get ahead in counts, then use that changeup to keep hitters off the fastball and his breaking stuff to get those swings and misses and end at bats. And with these changes to his game, Rodriguez didn't just turn his season around, he turned in some of the best numbers for a starting pitcher in the second half. From July 7th until the end of the season, there were 65 starting pitchers in MLB that threw at least 70 innings. Rodriguez's ERA and FIP both ranked fifth. He had the lowest homers per nine, homers per fly ball, and barrel percentage, and he was second in pitching plus. So putting himself up there was some of the best arms that the league has to offer. Now look, I know that this is a small sample size, it's about a third to a half of a season, so I'm not going to come out and say that he is this kind of elite arm right now. But if this is just a taste of what Rodriguez is capable of at the major league level, the Orioles could very well already have that guy that's going to be the ace of their rotation. And that's not even the best part for Orioles fans. Because also at the top of the rotation this year, they've had Kyle Bradish at 26 years old in only his second season, putting up a 2.86 ERA, 3.31 FIP, and 3.80 Sierra in 166 and two thirds innings over 29 starts. The websites haven't updated to include his last start here where he went two scoreless innings with no hits, one walk, and five Ks. Now Bradish this year leaned way more into being a sinker ball pitcher and used his four seamer that's been getting absolutely crushed way less. And that sinker gave him something early in counts to get some ground ball outs until he could use his slider and his curve to get strikeouts. So the Orioles now might have not one, but two guys that they can put at the top of their rotation. And they just got John Means back from Tommy John, who 
If you don't remember John Means from 2019 when he made the All-Star team through 2022 when he got hurt, he put up a 372 ERA and a 459 FIP over 353 and a thirds innings. Means can give up some home runs and he's not going to get the most strikeouts, but he's a guy that's just going to go right at you and he's not going to put free base runners on. He might not be that elite kind of pitcher, but Means gives you a more than capable guy to go in the middle of that rotation behind Rodriguez and Bradish, and that right there already gives you a pretty good potential one through three in your rotation. The Orioles have done a fantastic job with their rebuild, filling out a lineup that can put up runs in a bullpen full of electric arms. But now it seems like they might have added that final piece that they were missing when the season started. And once again, they were able to do it with the guys that they developed in their own system. Time will tell how much these starting pitchers develop and whether this one or half of a season here is either a flash in the pan or just the beginning of what's ahead. But if the Orioles now have two potential frontline starters to go with the rest of this team, the American League could be in trouble for a long time. But what do you think about Grayson Rodriguez, Kyle Bradish, or anyone else in that Orioles rotation? And do they finally have that ace to lead this rotation? If you're a fan of this team, you've definitely seen more of these guys than I have, so I'd love to get to talk some baseball about it with you guys. And while you're doing that, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications to make sure that you don't miss out on any future baseball videos like this one, and to help us reach more baseball fans and grow this community. Now going forward, we're going to be uploading once a week every Sunday, just trying to upload two videos a week right now while working full time and trying to have a life. It just keeps feeling like I'm either letting stuff fall through the cracks in my life or with the video stuff, or I'm just not able to give you guys as good of videos as I'd like to. So instead it's gonna be the one video a week so I can spend a little more time and effort on it and try to get as much good stuff into there as I can for you. And just thank you guys so much for everything that you've done to help build this channel to what it is already in one year. Like that's crazy to me to think about. So. Thank you guys again for all of that. If you'd like to support us and get yourself something cool at the same time, you can check out the link to our merch store that's down in the description. Or if you haven't seen it yet, you can just check out our latest video that's on your screen now about Kyle Schwarber and some of the problems that are starting to come up with analytics. And as always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Have an awesome day. Later.